Hello there, this is Chris Abraham. Welcome to season two of Chris Cast. This is episode 12. It is August 29th, and I am in South, sexy South Arlington, Arlington, Virginia, uh, in a place called um, Arlington Heights. Is that what it's called? Anyway, I should know where I live, I'm on the eighth floor. And um, I'm here to talk about my struggle with health and my pursuit of fitness. Uh, So this might either be long or short, depending on um, where my mind goes. Uh, The title of this episode is going to be Spin Goddess, because I have recently started attending a local spin class at Cycle Bar Columbia Pike almost every single day. Um, I will be taking a spin class at noon today for 45 minutes, and then tomorrow at noon for 45 minutes as well. So we'll see how long this lasts. Um, And I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on with me after the message. Welcome back. My name's Chris Abraham. This is Chris Cast, episode 13, season 2. It's title Spin Goddess. So, um, my last girlfriend, Betsy, uh, turned me on to spin class. I think she realized that I was plumping up and uh, decided to take me along with her to a place called Biker Bar. And I loved it. Um, I was really self-conscious about going because I perceive spin goddesses as little petite, thin um, perfections of of sinewy haunches and um, extreme extreme Leica uh, goodness. And that just isn't the case. Well, it was at Biker Bar, that's for sure. Everybody was like that, except they had all their rides in the dark with uh, electric candles. So even if you were uh, tubby like me, uh, nobody had to look at my butt. And Biker Bar didn't have any electrical leaderboards or anything like that. They were just mechanical spin bikes. Um, I'm, you know, spin, uh, they were really top of the line Schwinn bikes, but they were not, uh, there was not even any, um, electronic, um, you know, head, 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 whatever. There was no computer, uh, that you could use to see what your, um, what your power or, or any of that was. All there was, was a, um, was a little twisty, uh, gear, um, and that didn't have any reference to any gear number, and so the entire place was dark and it was completely analog and completely mechanical and it was awesome. I uh, loved it a lot. Then uh, my girlfriend and I broke up um, and I just did what I like to call slow jogging. Um, my office where I live now up on the eighth floor of Dominion Towers overlooking beautiful Army, Navy, country club um and uh about uh what a mile and a half two miles away was where our apartment was in crystal city so i would every uh morning put all my stuff on my backpack and and uh run uh slowly um all the way here and then i would get here work the day and then in the evening uh, after Betsy got home from work, I would put on my gear and I would run home and then take a shower there. Uh, so basically, I'd be sweaty and awful all day long at work unless I was going to go for a meeting. Anyway, uh, about a year and a half ago uh, or so, um, I realized that there was a... There was a uh, a spin club that had opened up on uh, Columbia Pike named Cycle Bar. 
and I went there and try and convinced Marina, the owner, to spot me free classes because I was an influencer and a blogger, and they had just opened, and maybe it would be good for me to tell the neighborhood that I was attending this thing and that it wasn't just for pretty people and that big, giant, six foot three, 300 pound men could uh, also be spin goddesses. And I loved it. Oh man, it's not as lo-fi as um, Biker Bar was, but you know, there's, uh, it's it, it looks fancy. It's it's. I've never been to a Soul Cycle, but Soul Cycle is extremely expensive. And for example, you can get unlimited spins at Cycle Bar for one hundred fifty dollars a month, which is a lot of money if you think about it. But really, isn't uh, based on the fact that a drop in uh, a drop in ride is twenty eight dollars. So really, just uh, four or five rides in your taken care of in terms of the unlimited and um so unfortunately in april 9 april 2019 uh my heart popped back into um afib and so i stopped riding because i was afraid for my heart i was afraid that because the afib made my heart rate speed up and slow down and speed up and slow down that i would accidentally because of my the way I'm wired, I wouldn't take each ride lightly. I would, you know, uh, attack a mountain, which is uh, basically ratcheting down the gears, making it really hard to pedal, and then getting out of the seat and really trying to get up that hill. Get up that hill. Get up that hill. You're going to get up that hill. Anyway, or... Uh, drop the uh, resistance down and do a huge sprint, you know, where you're doing um, uh, 120 beats per minute, 130 beats per minute, revolutions per minute, and, you know, your heart spikes and it's awesome and you sweat and you, um, the two minutes, you know, one minute, 45 seconds, 90 second uh, sprint ends and you're like, woohoo! Oh, by the way, not only am I a spin goddess, but I'm a, a woo girl. Um, and uh, I loved it, but I was afraid that the AFib was going to mess with that. So I stopped and I realized that the, and so they, uh, the, the cardiologists have been trying out different medications, trying out different strategies, and they got me on this thing called Tycosin, and it's amazing and that plus the fact that I haven't touched alcohol since, in any way, I haven't touched alcohol since mid-March. That was the X factor. The X factor was were twofold. The one X factor was whenever I touched alcohol, even just beer or wine or whatever, I would pop in AFib and it would mess me up for, you know, until I got a cardio version, which I'll talk about later, or or the Tycosin kicked back in, um, I'd be screwed. So I cut that out, and it hasn't been an issue. Uh, it's really nice to find out I'm not an addict. I'm just a glutton. Uh, we'll talk about gluttony later. And then uh, another X factor was, first of all, I wish that my guy friends would have told me years ago that they were on... Uh, CPAP machines, BiPAP machines, that they were uh, suffering from um, uh, sleep apnea because I'm all the apnea and all the snoring. And I've been on uh, this uh, ResMed AirCurve 10 ASV BiPAP machine for months now. And I like to say that uh, for eight hours a night, I, sl- I, I breathe like a yogi. So for eight hours a night, my body actually gets uh, as much oxygen as it needs. Um, it really just breathes for me. I'm, I'm basically on a ventilator for eight hours a day, and it's amazing. Um, my Fitbit sleep tracker couldn't be happier. So now I'm back at uh, now I'm back at uh, at Cycle Bar, and I'm paying. So it's been under a month. I think it's been uh, two weeks. Um, I've been going every day except one day. Uh, 
I went for three days in a row, and on the fourth day, my entire um, nervous system rebelled against me and made me lose lots of sleep because my legs were feeling like ee, ee, ee. That, those are my legs. And uh, that night, I ended up buying a a foam wedge that would allow me to raise my legs, and I ordered. Um, I ordered something from Amazon uh, that were cooling pads that I can put in the freezer. And so when I come in from a hard row, sorry, a hard spin, I could raise my legs on this foam wedge and then put uh, cold compresses on my on my legs and knees to, to calm them before going to sleep. Um, and it's been awesome. I've loved it. I've trained the people there to know the amazing instructors, and especially Leah, um, to let them know that I'm riding my own ride and that my form sucks and that I'm not following any of, I'm not really following anything that they are asking me to do. Um, and my strategy is this. Uh, I was turned on by Kafuzi, Michael Ko, Mike Ko, on YouTube. I was turned on to this thing called uh, the Maffetone system, and uh, it's called MAF, and it goes hand in glove with the subreddit that I created on on Reddit called Slow Jogging. And so I had become really into slow jogging when I was doing the commutes between my, uh, when I was living and running with Betsy. Um, you know, I was always DFL, dead effing last. I was always at the rear of the pack and I didn't care. I mean, even frustrated Betsy when we would, uh, run around Roosevelt Island, uh, she would just be like, uh, speed up, but I was happy just bopping along. And so I, I found a book on, um, I found a video on YouTube about slow jogging. If you search YouTube for slow jogging, you'll find a little old Japanese man and a gawky Polish woman, and they teach you the strategy of uh, slow jogging. And then I found on Amazon there was an entire book about slow jogging. And so I got into it, and I started writing articles on rnnr.us about slow jogging and the ultra shuffle, which I, you know, I'm not an ultra runner, but I kind of shuffle when I when I run. And then before I knew it, I started a sub Reddit on Reddit called, uh, and now there's 2,500 uh, subscribers, which is awesome. It's my only Reddit success that's on my bucket list. And then, then I found out after watching uh, Kafuzi that it perfectly goes hand in glove with this Maffetone by Dr. Maffetone and, uh, or Maffetone, however he pronounces his name. And, uh, it's awesome. It basically is all about just building your cardiovascular engine, building your machine, building the walls, making it stronger. And the way it works in a very basic level is it starts uh, 180 beats per minute minus your age, in my case, 50. So that, uh, that results in, I think, 130 right? 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So 130. And then there's other things like if you are on a lot of medication or sickly, uh, which, you know, I am, uh, you minus another 15, which is, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, I guess 115, right? And then, uh, so 130, no, okay, sorry, you minus 10 if you are, uh, you minus 10 if you are sickly, sickly and taking a lot of medicine, then you minus another five if you're, if you have allergies. And so I have both of those. So I minus 15 more off of the 130 and which equals 115. And then, so the range of heart rate you're supposed to stay into during any kind of training, for me, is between 105, which is a 10, 
a 10 beats per minute variable. So for me, it's between 105 and 115. Um, last night, I got up to 125, which in my training is anaerobic, which is antithetical to what I'm trying to do. But sometimes when a when a fellow spin goddess, uh, spin instructor, um, you know, spin coxswains me into doubling, tripling, quadruple speeding down in a sprint or, or a hill climb, I can't help myself. For example, yesterday they popped up on the board um, a competition to try to get the entire class, I guess, above 200 watts or 250 watts or 300 watts. So I ratcheted down the speed, uh, ratcheted down the resistance and just hunkered down and and uh, was grinding at over 300 watts trying to get the class's averages up. Um, oh, uh, and so I've been loving it. And, uh, and two days ago, I had to, no, um, and so the day after I took my day off because I, my legs were freaking out. Uh, the day after that, I was late for the class and kicked out and that cost me 20 bucks for missing, which is a lot more than it usually is, but there's only 12 or 13 bikes in the class because of coronavirus. Usually the, um, the studio is crammed with bikes, you know, where you're literally shoulder to shoulder with people. Uh, but now there's just 12 or 13. So if you miss a class, you're definitely, um, you're definitely, uh, beat up for that, which is acceptable. And, um, so then two days ago, I was having gastric problems and decide and and was on time for the I was early for the class but once I got there I was like hey I'm feeling unwell I am here on time please check me in but I went to the lockers and I'm feeling off so please please let me check in but not do the ride I am going to rush home and be nearby TMI, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So everything went fine. Yesterday was great. Today's going to be great. Um, I was completely soaked by rain on the way home, but I didn't get electrocuted by lightning, which I think is awesome. And so I think that I might keep this up. I think this might, I might keep this up. I have tattoos, believe it or not, the geekiest, nerdiest, stupidest tattoos in the entire world. Uh, I had them a year ago, uh, no, six months ago, I had them uh, inscribed in my, my thighs, and uh, on the left upper th upper thigh, I have, in lowercase, a uh, typewriter, uh, serif font, lowercase, walk, run, jog, and on my right upper thigh, uh, my quad, I have erg, row, swing. So I haven't been doing any of those things since I started um, with spinning because I've wanted to focus all of my energies there. But I do have my uh, 16, 20, 24, 32, and 40 kilogram kettlebells. And I have my Concept 2. And oh, here's a question that I have that I'm telling myself because nobody's really going to comment. <sighs> there, I'm a member of the Potomac Boat Club, although I don't row currently because I'm too heavy. Um, but I'm a member, and so as a member, I can become part of their of the Concept Two Virtual Team Challenge that's happening as of September 15th through October 15th. And that would mean that I would be spending, you know, an hour or so every day on the rowing ergometer on my Concept2 rower. Um, and so I'm thinking maybe do I do I take a month off from September 15th to October 15th to row? Or will I, by my very nature, wuss out without the motivation of my spin instructor? Should I do the classes as well 
as the row? Or should I really just challenge myself for those 30 days and then treat this rowing, sorry, treat this spinning as a, as a motivation, as no, as a fitness boot camp to give me the kind of aerobic and heart and cardio cardiovascular, uh, first step towards being able to row, um, you know, as many meters as possible for the 30 days of September. That would mean that I wouldn't be paying a cycle bar for a month, but it also means that I'd be contributing lots and lots of meters to Potomac Boat Club. And to be honest, the Concept 2 Indoor Rower is a superior uh, exercise to spinning or, you know, sorry, uh, um, you know, bicycling. It's a full body workout. It offers full range of motion. It works the legs, it works the cardio, it works the, the shoulders, the back, um, the glutes uh, beautifully. And so maybe I'll do that. Or maybe I'll do both. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to break myself. And ultimately, I want to lose weight so that I can get out onto the boat and that I can get to slow jogging. So maybe what I'll do is I will continue spinning and then I will put in very, very, very light meters just to keep the, keep the burn going, right? To keep the burn going. Anyway, wish me luck. Let me know what you think. Um, I hope this was useful. Um, oh, to let you know, because they track every workout um, in my spin class, they give you the results every day. And I'm always like, if there's 11... If there, I'm usually like 11th out of 12 or uh, 5 out of 6 or 4 out of 6 or uh, 10 out of 12. So I'm, I really am performance wise the back of the pack, but I don't, I don't care. And as another disincentive to become competitive in class, as another disincentive to leave the Maffetone requirements and I'll talk about Maffetone next time, why I think slow jogging and Maffetone are awesome, if I haven't already. But I also, there's a checkbox you can do when you sign in as to whether or not you want your stats to pop up on the, uh, on the uh, display televisions, on, in the displays in terms of how you're doing in, in relationship to the other riders. And I refuse to do that because... Uh, it's not out of embarrassment because my name's Duga, but they can't see what bike you're on. But it's more because I don't want to go ahead and uh, and feel the pack mentality, the desire to perform, and I just want to be left alone to do my to do my uh, 105 to 115 um, um, beats per minute training. Oh, finally, not that you would care, but. I have awesome everything wired for sound. I have a um, a Polar H10 chest monitor, which the um, Schwinn AC blue blue carbon bike the uh, the the computer can read my chest strap, so I, I get accurate. Um, accurate heart rate readings on my bike, which is awesome. So I can keep track of that there. So I think it only works with polar. I don't think it's ant or anything. I think you basically have to have polar. So I can only wear my polar H10 there. I think that's the reason why I got it. And so I wear my uh, old Garmin Forerunner 920 XT there. And guess what? The bike also um, communicates via Bluetooth power and and uh, cadence. So I have, there's only one bike that I work out at anymore. It's bike 12, but across the room, there's a bike one that I also use. And so I have it set up so that when I get there 10 minutes early, and because the bikes are so well spaced because of coronavirus, I can, I, I just start pedaling. I start my timer on my indoor bicycling mode on my uh, Garmin, and then I 
am able to find my heart rate on the Garmin and also the power in cadence and speed uh, on the um, on the uh, the Schwinn spin bike. The only thing that doesn't come through, sadly, is distance. So before, while I'm stretching, at the end of every spin session, they have stretching. While I'm stretching, I commit to memory the number of miles that the bike tells me I've ridden. And then while I can't add that to Strava, I can definitely add that stuff to uh, to to Garmin uh, Connect. So then I leave and, oh, here's another thing. I walk there, which is 0.82, between 0.82 and 0.92, depending on how... I guess the GPS is working. So I do walk there as a warm up and walk home every day. So I also track that and I call it my schleps because all I'm doing really is walking to spin. But because it's almost a mile each way, I thought I would include it in terms of my, my workout regimens because it's, you know, effectively a, uh, a warm up um, gets me ready for the class and then allows me to actively cool down, you know. So they really don't spend that much time during a cool down. To be honest, it kind of bothers me that most spin instructors run an extremely intense uh, uh, sprint right before they go straight into uh, stretches and don't really have a, uh, you know, a an active cool down. Which is fine because then I walk home and that is my cool down, you know, because I'm 350 pounds, that is basically uh, exercise, right? It's like um, farmers carry. So there, this is the Spin Goddess episode. My name is Chris Abraham. I will say goodbye to you after the next message. Welcome back. My name is Chris Abraham. This is season two, episode 13 of Chris Cast. I'm glad you're here and I would love to talk to you. I had a running blog called rnnr.us, but I closed it because I wanted to focus on chrisabraham.com. So I paid uh, some members of my Indian team to move and port every, every, um, blog post. There's over 300 blog posts from rnnr.us. Uh, moved it over to chrisabraham.com. Broke some images. They're working on that. It'll be perfect soon. Uh, so I kind of keep everything on there. chrisabraham.com is my HQ. So feel free to join uh, up with me there. Um, I do have comments open on everything. However, because of spamming, everything is held for moderation. Um, even after you use the uh, the CAPTCHA, uh, it still doesn't stop the most sophisticated comment spammers. So please, if you comment and your uh, comment doesn't show up right away, please just have a little bit of patience. I will be on it at least once a day. Uh, all my contact info is there, however... I am on Twitter at Chris Abraham. I'm on No Agenda Social at Chris. I am on Instagram at Chris Abraham. I am on Facebook.com slash Chris Abraham. Instagram.com slash Chris Abraham. Um, LinkedIn.com slash in slash Chris Abraham. Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm user Chris Abraham on Reddit. And don't forget to come visit me at slash r slash slow jogging or slash u slash Chris Abraham. And that's it. If you want to email me, I'm chris at abraham.su. Um, I'm very proud of that because I was able to register 
a very famous name, a very famous word, Abraham, Abraham. The only place I could find it was Godless Soviet Union. So uh, they still have a .su top level domain. And since I'm a geek and obsessive about this kind of thing, I was able to get Abraham.su. So Chris at Abraham.su. Love you guys. Thanks a lot. And I will hopefully give you episode numero 11, 12, 13, 14. Numero 14 soon. I thank you for listening. Ciao.